Hey everyone, and welcome back in. Well, we're starting off a brand new series. Yep, we're doing a Jag Panther, something popular for a change, something big and German. And <laughs> once we get done with this episode by the end, well, we'll have it constructed. Yep, we'll work on Zimmerit or Zimmerit. I don't know how exactly you pronounce it. And well, let's kick things off with something very special here. Over this summer, I was able to go to Munster, the Panther Museum there, and just to get us in the mood, let's take a look at this Jag Panther. Not only around it, but yep, I was able to climb on board and inside. Enjoy. Well, as you can imagine, that was quite the experience, and I really need to thank my host at MBK uh, for what a great day, what a wonderful experience. So, opening up the box, yep, we've got a lot of parts, and I'm going to be using the kit tracks here, so we'll get to that in just a second. Of course, tons and tons of road wheels. Everything looks great. Of course, it's a main kit, new tools. It's It should go together just fine. I'm looking forward to this. The main kit includes a sprue of photo etch, some nice clear parts, a decal sheet for four different Jag Panther markings. I did order just a few things to go along with this. I ordered a set of Echelon decals. Many of the profiles from Echelon are exactly the same as what's in the box, but as you can see in terms of the color profiles or the interpretation, uh, they tend to be quite different. <laughs> so I'll do a little bit of a, I don't know, we'll figure it out as we go along sort of thing. Keep in mind if you do this kit, uh, a couple of these different profiles do require Zimmerit, Zimmerit, and that is not included with this kit, so you'll have to figure out how to apply that myself. And here's a few of the extra goodies, some Aber photo etch for the rear boxes and the fenders. So with that, let's get started. Uh, basically, this will be a construction video. I'll kind of dip in and out like we've done in the last few videos. I'll we'll put a little bit of background music here, cue up the background music and start putting things together. This is probably one of the reasons I don't do a lot of Panthers because, oh my gosh, look at all these road wheels. What the heck were these German engineers thinking at that time? The suspension arms go in, They're, they, they are sequenced, so make sure you pay attention to the instructions, keep those in the right sequence, and they are fixed, more or less, but you can make these movable if you so desire. Next, yep, I'm gonna be using the kit tracks, and well, this is where things really slow down. If things go really wrong, I do have a set of rules in the background that I can always revert back to. Well, that took a good, <laughs> pretty much half a day at best. Uh, let's see. I do have a set of left and rights, 87 links per instructions per side, and now I get all these guide horns. They look great because they're all nice and hollow like they should be, but yep, there's a lot to cut out, clean up, and then we get to put two on per length. And as you can tell, this is another slow slog through all this uh, track building business. Thank you. 
But finally, I do get my two bowls back in shape. Now we have our guide teeth and we have a left and right. And we'll set those aside and work on those a little bit later. Switching gears slightly, or maybe, maybe not so slightly, let's work on some photo etch. These are the Aber sets. Uh, this is the rear stowage locker. It's also have a set for the front fenders. In retrospect, I uh, probably could have got away without either of these kits, but I did want the opportunity, if need be, to add a little bit of battle damage, and of course the brass allows that very easily. These stowage lockers also have the wrong structural pattern on the rear of them, so I do have to fix that a little bit with a little bit of styrene. I'll do that crosshatch pattern a little bit later. But the photo etch does allow for an opportunity to demonstrate soldering just one more time. First thing I do, make some very small little chips with the solder. Yep, I know this is all old-fashioned soldering, but this is the way I like to do it. Add a little bit of the flux paste right in the joint where I'd like the solder to run. Add one of those little chips right there. Grab my old-fashioned Radio Shack soldering iron. This is actually 40 watts for those of you who care. Just touch it and allow that solder to roll down that seam. Just that easy. The front fenders on Panthers have that structural rib pattern on the front. Of course, photo etch is flat, so you have to recreate that. Flip the photo etch upside down. There's already some pre-marked holes. Just use a ballpoint pen. A little bit of pressure on a soft surface, just a thin piece of cardboard that actually came with the photo etch. That's the backing cardboard. Just press into there, and there you have your nice ribs and a few bolt details. Just a little bit of cleanup using that metal file, and then remove the existing fenders from the plastic. This is that moment where I get to say thank you to my Patreon for helping to support this channel. If you do like this channel and would like to support it further, I do have a Patreon page. The link for that is in the description below. Patreon members enjoy early viewing of these videos, special feature Patreon videos, photographs of these projects ongoing, final photographs, a look into future projects. We have a Discord server for chats. I please encourage you to come check it out and help support this channel. Thank you. Okay, who's up for some fun? Well, <laughs> here we go. I have only applied Zamira one time, and that was maybe 15 years ago, but this reference clearly needs Zamira. The instructions, of course, show it. The reference photograph clearly shows the anti-magnetic paste applied to it as well. Uh, well, just for laughs, here's a look at the 148 scale Stug 4 conversion I did, like I said, about 15 years ago, and that's my one and only attempt at applying Zamerit. Not saying it came out bad, but I'm certainly not practiced at this. So, because I have no experience with this, let's try to figure this out together. I tried to find the Tamaya putty that is, seems to be popular for doing this, and I tried online, and I tried at my local hobby store, and just was not available at the time. So I'm going to use epoxy sculpt and hope for the best. I did try to practice this a little bit, try to figure out which techniques might work better. I tried smashing it out on the surface and applying the pattern. Then I thought about, well, let's if I can roll this out thin enough and apply it to the surface, maybe that will work better, be nice and uniformed. So here's my attempt with that. So I've got a piece of plastic card stock. I've got a piece of epoxy sculpt that I've rolled out really nice and thin. Just a little bit of water on the surface just to help the adhesion and lay that over the surface. And then while I was practicing, I was paying attention to things like drying times. And once I applied the putty onto the surface, it's best to leave it set for, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes perhaps. And then I was able to scribe into it. Doing it with a knife now, but I end up using a razor blade later on just to help make the strokes nice and even. The pattern on the Yag Panthers was generally this checkerboard sort of a pattern. And I want to make sure that those are sort of, sort of lined up and sort of straight. So I just went ahead and start just drawing up the pattern over the top of the parts itself. Now I have my rolled out piece of putty. Just apply that onto the plastic part and kind of get it set down into place. And then as mentioned, I just allow the putty to sit on the surface for a you know, half hour, 45 minutes, and it kind of stiffens up and adheres to the surface so 
things don't just fall right back off. And then I can just use my sharp blade using the kit parts as a template and cut out the shape of the putty. I then let the putty set for maybe another half an hour so it stiffened up a little bit on the surface. And then I, through my experiments, I found that trying to draw a blade across caused the putty to rip. So pressing down with the straight blade like this was much easier, much more effective, and a lot less tearing and ripping of the putty. Now the shape of the Egg Panther makes adding the Zamerit in this fashion somewhat unique because these are just very flat panels and so I thought if I can do this before I put everything together it's much easier to work on a flat surface than try to do that type of work once the model is assembled. There were certain areas where the putty either flaked off or these, these corners where things needed to attach. Just add a little more putty in there, just kind of smash it in, get it to the proper thickness, and then reestablish the pattern just using the tip of my blade. Yep, this is the way it goes. You take all that time making a perfect fender, and then you just decide to, to wreck it with a pair of pliers. To install, I add just a small shim, a little plastic shim to the bottom of the fender, and now I can glue the fender directly onto the plastic. Plastic on plastic, nice and strong. Returning back to the Zamerit, just a few last details. Of course, not every place I was able to add those large sheets. So much like the corners and some of these areas where it got knocked off, I just smashed some of the epoxy sculpt into place and just match up the pattern using the tip of my knife. The screens for the engine deck, the photo etch, I wanna make sure that I don't just clog up all those little holes with paint, so I give them a first wash with metal burnishing that turns the photo etch a nice dark color. Now I don't need to apply so much paint in order to cover up all that shiny brass. The kit does come with some photo etch little foliage loops uh, to add to the to the model, but boy, those were fiddly and small, and I just figured they're gonna get knocked off, so I decided to go ahead and make some new ones. A Little bit of thin wire. I annealed it with some heat just to make it nice and soft so I can bend it easier. Just kind of make a little bit of a curve right there. Cut the shape, and then we'll just apply it into some pre-drilled holes. Well, it's time for the tracks, and this is probably the most nerve-wracking part of the whole single-link track thing. You pretty much have to do everything at the last moment. So I've built up these little runs of, say, 10 or 12, and then I glue these all together. So now I have my entire track run. Then I give everything a nice light coat of the glue, let that set for a little while, until the tracks get to that point where you can bend them, but they don't fall apart. Then it's a matter of wrestling them into shape, and here's my fancy track sag gizmos here. Yep, just jam some stuff in there. But put those in there while the tracks are drying, curing up, and then you can get your track sag, and those are nice and hard. We'll let those dry for another few hours, and I'll be able to pull everything off. As I noted in the beginning, this is more or less an out-of-the-box type of a project, but I do have a few details here and there. For instance, these German tool clamps from MJ Miniatures, they had just a nice little touch of finesse. One thing I did notice using the epoxy sculpt, at least the way I applied it, is that it's somewhat uh, susceptible to flaking off. And part of it has to do with the, the pattern because I was cutting all those little squares. So a lot of those little squares will just pop off every now and again for no apparent reason. So I thought if I apply just a light coat of Mr. Surfacer 500, highly thinned down with the lacquer thinner, just apply it over the top that maybe that would give it a little bit more hardness and get everything set up on the model just a little bit more securely. And yes, it did exactly what I hoped it would do.
As you can tell, construction is basically getting wrapped up here, which means we're going to wrap up episode number one of our Yag Panther project here. There we go. Just kind of spinning around with my finger. Oh, I could do better than this. I've got something fancy here. Let's put her on the turntable. There. That's much better. So as seen, episode one is construction. Basically out of the box with this kit, but of course the Zemirat is quite the little challenge, especially for me, who really is just stumbling and fumbling his way through that. But I don't think it came out too bad. I'm not a Panther expert, so don't hit me too hard in the comments. If you like these episodes, you like this series, you like this channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page and the link is in the description below. Early viewing of these videos, special feature videos, all sorts of things are over there. Please check it out and consider subscribing. So looking forward, episode number two, well that of course will be all about painting and I better hurry up and get started on that or else it won't be next week. But we'll get to that when we get to that. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoy this channel. Again, to everybody, happy modeling, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Take care.